Good morning, guys. Welcome to today's lesson, looking at uh, some index laws. We're only looking at three today, um, so it'll be quite a short lesson. Um, the first one, we're looking at a question where we are multiplying two um, algebraic terms where the bases are the same. Okay, now I can do this in ex um, expanded form, I guess. What does a cubed mean? Well, hopefully you recognize that a cubed means a times a times a. We've got a times in the middle. A squared means a times a, which means that if I can simplify that, we actually have a to the power of 5. Now, can you see a relationship between the 3 and the 2 and our answer with the 5? Well, hopefully what you've recognized is that 3 plus 2 is 5. And that's part of our rule. If the bases are the same, for example, we have a to the power of m times a to the power of n, so the bases are the same, what we simply do is add the indices together. And that's one of our first index laws. The second question, we have a division question. Okay, a bit more challenging. So first of all, we can look at this and say, well, 15 divided by 5, that's going to be 3. Okay, just do the numbers as you would normally sort of look at. Now I've got a to the power of 4 divided by a to the power of 3. So what does this actually mean? Well, I could rewrite this way. a times a times a times a, that's a to the power of 4, divided by, well, the same as that symbol there, a to the power of 3 is this one. Now, hopefully you remember in class, I've had that um, the couple of questions, like I say, what's 5 divided by 5? And hopefully you say the answer is 1. What's 10 divided by 10? Hopefully you say the answer is 10, so 1. <laughs> Was a billion divided by a billion? 1. What is A divided by A? Well, that answer is also 1. And what happens, it's the same as like cancelling out. For example, A divided by A, it, we can just replace it with a 1. We don't really need it there because 1 times A is just A. Um, a divided by A, A divided by A, and what you can recognise that we have 1A left over. So we now have 3A or 3a to the power of 1. So that's a quick sort of rendition of how we divide. But look, let's look, look at the numbers. We've got 4 and 3, and we have a, an answer of 1. So can you think of a way you can get 4 and 3 to make 1? Well, hopefully you've recognized that 4 take away 3 is 1. And if we look at the rule, it's kind of opposite to the multiplication rule, because that's what is opposite of multiply. So a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n. So if the bases are the same and we're dividing, what we can actually do is we can subtract the indices. So in that case, we said 15 divided by 5 was 3. And then 4 take away 3 is 1. So it's just a to the power of 1 or just 3a. OK, um, we'll go through these in more detail with some examples shortly. Um, the last one, we've got one where we have a power inside the brackets and we have a power outside the brackets. Now, you might remember how to do this, but what does actually cubing something mean? Well, what it means is, hopefully you re remember that, it means that I'm multiplying it by itself, and in this case, three times. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to multiply a squared by itself three times. Now that now kind of looks like question one, where if we are multiplying the bases together, we said that the rule was we can add the powers, which means that we get the answer of a to the power of six. So like I've said previously, um, if I look at the two and look at the three, how do you think we've made the answer of six? Well, we've done that by multiplying. So we're going to come up with our last index law for today. a to the power of m brackets all to the power of n, where m and n are just numbers. Uh, in this case, it was 2 and 3. But if I have that, one inside, one outside, we multiply the indices together. Okay, like that question. The last one there, you do get a couple of challenging questions which we'll have a look at. So what we're going to go through now, um, we're going to go through some questions on each of those three rules. So the first one, you might want to pause this if you would like and see if you can have a crack at, at how to do this and then you can play the answer. Okay, so when we're looking at our, our, our algebraic terms, we've got 5 times a cubed times 2 times a to the power of 6. And remember, because it's all timesings, I can simply do the 5 times 2 to start with. What is 5 times 2? Well, that answer is 10. 
So now I can deal with my algebraic terms, a cubed times a to the power of six. So the rule was when we're multiplying, the bases are the same, we can simply add the powers. So we're gonna have 10a to the power of three plus six is nine. Okay, that's it. What about the next one? Six times three, well that's gonna be 18. Now here I need to look at the ones that have the same bases. So we're gonna have q to the power of seven and then we've got y and y to the power of four. Well, that's actually y to the power of one. So one plus four is five. So I get y to the power of five. Be careful, a lot of people forget about the power of one there. It might put y to the power of four. So just be a little bit careful. Okay, question two. So again, you might wanna pause this and then uh, check your answers. Okay, so 50 divided by 10, well, that equals five. And then I'm dividing, so this is a cubed, this is a to the power of one. The rule was take them away. So three take away one is two, so I'm left with five a squared. Remember, that, again, that happens because we have three being multiplied together. We only have one on the bottom, one of them cancels out, which means I have that a squared left over. But obviously the rule's a little bit quicker. What about the next one? The next one's a bit more challenging because if I do 50 divided by 30, that doesn't go in exactly. So what we can look for is perhaps a number that goes into both 50 and 30. For example, 10. How many 10s go into 50? Well, 10 times 5 is 50. 3 times 10 is 30. Or what you could do is just knock off the zeros as well. That can be the same thing. You can also use a calculator to help. Now these questions here, this becomes a bit more challenging. Now see I've got this, I've got um, a squared on top and an a6 on the bottom. So if I subtract them, what's two take away six? Well that gives you the answer of negative four. So you might have a to the negative four, like that, and then one take away one is zero, which means that they cancel each other out. So you could actually have that answer there. Alternatively, what you can have, and I will suggest guys that this is probably a bit more preferred, um, where I've got my five over three, okay, that's from the 50 divided by 30, but I often start where the A is the biggest. For example, A to the power of six is the biggest on the bottom. So I'm gonna start on the bottom and say six take away two is four, but because I start on the bottom, I'm gonna say, a to the power of four. Okay, and again, the y's will cancel out. Now, funny enough, those two answers are actually identical. Okay, you'll notice the negative four with the a's on the top, but when it goes down to the bottom, it turns to a positive four. So again, you don't really need to know too much about negative um, indices just yet. We go into more detail later on. But certainly, the way I will look at it, I look to see where the biggest power is or index is, and I start from that um, that side, so the top or the bottom. Okay, a little bit more challenging, I know. Next one. Okay, so inside outside brackets, we know that we multiply. So four times three is twelve. Okay, again, you can do that from saying a to the four times a to the four times a to the four, and then add them together, we get a to the 12. That's going exactly the same way. But the next one's a bit more challenging. I wonder if you get this one out. Now, a lot of people say this is eight a to the power of 20, which is unfortunately, it's not correct. So if you got that, I'm sorry, you're wrong. The actual answer is 16 a to the power of 20. You might think, well, where did the 16 come from? So let's do it this way. Let's do it a little bit longer, just to double check. We've got 2a to the power of 5 times 2a to the power of 5 times 2a to the power of 5 times 2a to the power of 5. Now we can see clearly that's where the 20 comes from, because 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is a to the 20. Can you see where the 16's come from, though? We're actually doing 2 times two, times two, times two, or alternatively, you're actually saying two to the power of four. Okay, so this four works on not only the a to the power of five, but it also works on the two. And it's not two times four, it's two to the power of four, which obviously makes a quite a big difference. That question there, folks, is quite challenging.
Okay, now the very last question, this is like the extension stuff, the hard stuff. This is where you have some stuff on the top of the fraction that we probably need to simplify first of all. So can you simplify that first? Let's see. 8 times 3 is 24. A squared times A to the 6, we're going to add those numbers together to make A to the power of 8. Q to the power of 1 times Q to the power of 5 is Q to the power of 6. I'm going to put that over 6A to the 4, Q to the 4. So that's one mark to start with. The second mark now comes from simplifying. Well, 24 divided by 6, that goes exactly into 4. Now I'm dividing these, so I'm going to minus the powers. 8 take away 4 is just 4. I'm going to minus the powers again. 6 take away 4 is 2. So I'm just left with 4a to the power of 4, q squared. Look, I hope that was useful to you. Again, that's only the three rules at the moment. We'll go into more detail with some of those other rules. Um, have a crack at some of the work in the textbook. And uh, any problems, please give me a quick uh, email um, or ask me in class for some help. Hopefully uh, you understood this, guys, and I will see you later on. Have a great day.